Hello everyone, uh, going ahead with whatever we were discussing with respect to entrepreneurship and design thinking especially, I would like to draw your attention towards role of insight in entrepreneurship. As we have uh, tried to establish that entrepreneurship is associated with capitalizing upon opportunities, looking for opportunities vis-a-vis -vis ideas, concepts, what new can be brought in, how it can be uh, yielded towards the benefits of all the stakeholders including the entrepreneur. So, role of insights is very important. There have been several studies which have been done on uh, insight and insight development. Uh, one of the most uh, important study or, or let us say uh, interesting book which I would like to refer here is uh, Seeing What Others Do not by Gary Klein and uh, that actually establishes uh, the traits of insight and uh, proposes how insight can be developed. Taking clues from these kind of researches uh, and as that book also refers, uh, I would like to correlate the as aspects of uh, insight and entrepreneurship with the elements of insight. Uh, you may say those are uh, let us say 5 C's of as far as insight development goes and uh, uh, those, those can be termed as uh, connections, contradictions, uh, creative desperation, uh, curiosity and uh, 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 one or two other elements of uh, you know coincidences for example. Now there, there are other elements which support this uh, aspect of insight development as well, but let us see you know how it works actually. Let, let us try and unfold these elements one by one in uh, relation to an entrepreneurial perspective which uh, is evident in so many efforts which are being made around. So you see the, the factor of inside development which authors they have tried to explain is related to error minimization and uh, you know um, uh, productivity enhancement. So, error minim minimization does not enhance its productivity that uh, or, or performance as per uh, you know several studies which have been done. So, they say that inside development actually enhances productivity and, and uh, but we are here looking towards uh, insight in, in terms of entrepreneurial development in entrepreneurship actually. So, uh, let us let us try and think about opportunities vis-a-vis uh, -vis entrepreneurship, vis-a-vis -vis inside. There are several aspects of let us say uh, you know connections which, uh, which insight development says that we should look for. Uh, you know as, as, as uh, this uh, slide says or the, this text says that look for connections, make connections between the clients, markets and other markets past or present. Uh, there are several examples which are given by uh, author in this book and other authors as well in several papers wherein uh, you know how connections work. Our, our brain is attuned with uh, a practice of uh, connecting things when, when we talk about correlating things and then uh, developing connections between incidents or let us say uh, uh, whatever is going on, uh, on around us. So, uh, we have to look for connections. We have to we have to look for clues which which are connected by things. For example, there is uh, a political uh, change which is happening, which may definitely affect some other things. So that is very apparent kind of a thing which goes on around us. But then there are uh, you know scientific changes which are going on, which cannot be observed to, so directly, which uh, which have to be learned about. There are some economic changes, there are some uh, you know uh, other kinds of changes which are going on around us which we have to find out and we have to look for connectivity between the changes and what can be derived out of these kind of changes. So, uh, there are there are several aspects uh, which we can dwell upon. There are uh, uh, changes in technology which can develop a, a higher yield in agriculture for example. Uh, for example, uh, it, it was an interesting lecture which I was attending um, on uh, 
additive printing or uh, you know 3D printing uh, popularly called as uh, you know 3D and 4D printing wherein uh, shape memory alloys are being referred to and, and uh, those kind of things are working upon uh, are worked upon. So, uh, th now that, that gives us an interesting impetus that so many things which were produced in a different manner earlier uh, are produced differently with the help of 3D printing nowadays. So, uh, the presenter suggested so many things and Google is full of uh, what 3D printing is doing nowadays and how this technology is getting matured enough to support so many uh, manufacturing or production efforts or, or so many small devices are easily being manufactured. For example, uh, hearing aids or uh, devices are now being um, manufactured through 3D printing and so, so many other things are being done. So, the, you see 3D development of 3D printing has uh, given impetus to so many things uh, in, in terms of application. This is one again apparent aspect of uh, connecting things uh, in uh, with respect to entrepreneurship development. But at the back side of this connection between incidents or, or let us say whatever we have observed and what it may yield that brings in an apparent relationship between what we observe after the entrepreneurial effort has been made. Similarly, we have uh, an aspect of contradiction. Now, it is very interesting when we talk of contradictions actually uh, and, and uh, one would appreciate uh, whenever I ask my students that how many books uh, you have read completely while doing your courses. Generally, uh, most of the time students uh, they read objectively, you know they read portions of the books. Uh, that does not mean that books are to be uh, written in portions after because, because students read that because you do not know which, which portion student would find useful for as far as pursuing his semester or let us say subjects go. But uh, reading has reduced a lot. Now, one has to progress in academics or in career uh, through intense reading and through elaborative learning and con to contradiction here is that reading is getting reduced and, and that is what uh, contradictions uh, you know look for contradictions kind of thing suggests that look for inconsistencies in behavior and beliefs and, and uh, uh, the resultant is that there are so many things which are happening and which you find that they should be like uh, this but, but on the other side we find that actual uh, situation suggests that they are not uh, going the way they are supposed to. So, this is one example wherein you know uh, reading is getting reduced although uh, the qualified uh, people coming out of universities is uh, then their number is getting enhanced. So, this is a contradictory kind of factor when I discuss these kind of things with publishers uh, I do not find satisfactory answers that why uh, they are unable to project books uh, as a mode of uh, enhancing the capacity of uh, a human being in longer term. Uh, they uh, when, when uh, they try to you know sell their books they uh, always say that it is a very limited number which uh, they are looking for as far as you know the, their sales forecast goes. So, they come and talk to um, professors and they try to emphasize upon that uh, this uh, book should be used uh, as uh, uh, you know uh, to support the course and so on. But uh, I wonder most of the times that uh, they they come, they project that book uh, you know uh, as an aid to the particular subject, but they are unable to guide the professor that what this book can do for them. And moreover, they rely upon uh, the teachers and professors to uh, emphasize uh, the utility of that particular book on the students. Now, there is a bigger question of how students would like that book and how they would actually uh, would like to use that book. So, there is, an con there is a contradictory element in this whole story. Uh, wherein opportunity is also seen and uh, there is other uh, element that opportunity is also observed to be lost actually. So, this is how contradictions they work. So, there are several examples which authors have explained to, uh, uh, to suggest the uh, presence of contradictions in uh, 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 you know through different modes or different narrations kind of. Then 
there is an aspect of creative desperation how uh, how you want to bring in results differently how you want to uh, enhance the resource utilization how intelligently you are using the opportunity along with the resources and how well you want to capitalize upon these kind of things we have seen a uh, lot many entrepreneurial ventures going on around us and so many brilliant startups that uh, those have come and so many mobile application based startups those have come so many mm, uh, you know uh, computer based startups or internet based startups we have seen uh, those have come then there are so many restaurants we have seen those are uh, those have come and and uh, you know that is the resultant of uh, creative desperation which uh, which is which is again an imbibed characteristic uh, of an entrepreneur so uh, entrepreneur has it but one has to recognize that methodically to uh, uh, bring in results and similarly uh, there is a uh, the case of coincidence or or let's say uh, curiosity is associated with as far as uh, dwelling upon uh, insight for entrepreneurial uh, usage go now i would i would uh, try to focus upon few uh, examples and uh, try to analyze these things with the perspective of those examples uh, uh, this i i might have referred one of these in earlier discussions as well but let's see for example veena vadini uh, school there is a school in uh, singroli uh, uh, region of singroli in uh, central india now mr virangat sharma he was working with indian army and uh, once he was visiting his village where in he found that alcoholism has increased uh, uh, because people most of the people are um, uh, engaged in uh, uh, producing local uh, al- local uh, resource based alcohol or country liquor and uh, so many children are engaged in uh, selling that country liquor so it was uh, you know a very bad feeling which came uh, into his mind because he was serving his country working with uh, uh, a wonderful organization that is indian defense forces and the indian army so he actually felt uh, that uh, why he uh, he should not do something for these children and he was going uh, back to his unit and uh, as the story says uh, that he was reading a magazine where in um, he read that uh, dr rajendra prasad uh, ji the first uh, president of india he used to write simultaneously with both hands now that gave him an insight that uh, can this be utilized as a mode to enhance uh, uh, attraction of children towards education and uh, uh, can education uh, and, uh, and you know uh, the zeal of gaining knowledge can be enhanced through this kind of a mode basically so uh, a few days later he comes back to his village establishes a small school called veena vadini school and then he starts practicing himself uh, to write with both hands and then he starts practicing writing two different texts with both hands you know uh, you write with both hands simultaneously uh, with one hand you are writing in hindi one hand you are writing in english and then uh, progressing towards another uh, stage of this you are writing two different types of uh, texts that is uh, in two different languages hindi and english and uh, with one hand you are writing on some other subject and with, uh, simultaneously with other hand you are writing on the uh, other subject so while practicing these kind of things he started developing this zeal amongst the students as well and uh, because he was able to practice uh, a bit so he could attract few students who also got attracted on you know writing uh, this way and then slowly he started developing students and students uh, started gaining interest in getting knowledge and uh, it's been almost 25 years he has been running the school and he has produced quite a lot of students on this and he says that results are very satisfactory Uh, satisfactory uh, definitely these kind of efforts they require a lot of uh, investment input also because uh, you see entrepreneurship is all related to bringing in uh, opportunity to capitalize that with the uh, perspective of economic gain and then re infusing money in that uh, i am not sure that why these kind of efforts could not be supported with lot of uh, investment which was which is required to support these kind of uh, efforts but but finally when we realize uh, you know that the resultant which uh was supposed to come it came student got attracted towards uh, uh gaining education and knowledge 
Same happened with husk power, uh, uh, Gyanesh Pandey uh, thought of using rice husk to uh, generate uh, uh, electricity and power and uh, they started using uh, rice husk which is a waste uh, technically for uh, using that in gasifiers and then uh, producing electricity and then uh, they are doing a larger pit uh, actually. So, there are several other uh, efforts which are being uh, made. Uh, there is uh, one effort called Jaldut in Maharashtra wherein uh, they realize that there is a and, and as we all acknowledge you see uh, recently we got to learn that uh, South Africa Cape Town. Uh, people are short of drinking water also and there is an advisory from the side of government that uh, they should not use water for anything else other than drinking. So, this is the kind of dearth one is facing in different parts of this earth and um, you see uh, we, we have seen that uh, rivers are depleting the quality of water of rivers are depleting and so on and, and uh, there are places wherein uh, water is being lost dramatically. So, uh, you know there are several efforts. Jaldut realized that uh, there is a dearth of uh, quality drinking water and then they started installing RO systems or water purification systems on uh, the uh, small uh, automotives or let us say three wheelers and so and uh, the, uh, the, the energy of the moving uh, energy of this auto when it uh, moves from one place to other it actually you know generates enough power for this RO system to work and uh, simultaneously while they are moving towards uh, from one place to the other the water which they fill in these RO systems gets purified and by the time they reach to the target audience or um, you know customer uh, water is purified purified and they sell this uh, purified water at a very small price and, and uh, bringing access to these people uh, for clean drinking water. So, it is a huge effort which has been made and uh, the things are being done. So, again uh, somewhere connections, contradictions, creative desperation, coincidences and these kind of curiosities these, these kind of things are working here. Narayan Hridayale for example. It is a huge laudable effort and we all know about this. Dr. Devi Shetty realized that uh, cardiac patients are you know uh, in uh, are there in every nook and corner of this country and uh, many of them they cannot afford good uh, health, uh, health support. So, and because because uh, you know uh, cardiac ailments they require a lot of money support as well if you have to come to the cities and then you have to go to the costly hospitals and so on. So, uh, he tried to collate three things basically you know uh, this uh, long distance connectivity through uh, technology and uh, insurance cover for uh, poor people and uh, at the back of it he had all the machinery to support these people for uh, you know uh, treating them. And uh, putting all these three things in place, Narayan Hridayale became a reality and uh, they have been serving people from every uh, corner of this country uh, at a very low price of uh, having 60 to 100 rupees of uh, annual premium for, uh, for their insurance cover and uh, they are being treated in that kind of a money and uh, that is a boon to several thousands and thousands of uh, uh, patients. So, uh, you see and, and for example, how digital diaries uh, they came into being uh, uh, you know in a, uh, this this uh, interestingly this uh, this was narrated to uh, our audience and our students at uh, IIT Roorkee by uh, Mr. Sam Petroda in uh, through one of his virtual lectures uh, from USA. Uh, he, he narrated that how uh, he developed an algorithm for digital diaries. He uh, said that he invited someone for dinner and he forgot. And uh, once this person comes uh, for dinner, he uh, uh, did not know what to say. So, he had to you know go for uh, dinner once again. And then he realized that he wrote that thing in his uh, one of his uh, diaries or table diaries that someone is going to visit him uh, this evening and uh, he forgot to open up that diary. So, he thought that why should not be there a talking diary uh, you know uh, the, there should be a talking diary uh, which could tell him that someone is visiting and he uh, does not need to open up the uh, table diary and so on. 
So, he developed an algorithm and uh, in the meanwhile he was called to, in, uh, to India to serve the country and he came and then for many years when he stayed there he forgot about uh, what kind of algorithm he developed and when once he went back to USA after a few years he realized that digital diaries are already a reality and he uh, slightly discussed this thing with the companies which produced digital diaries and uh, the companies realized that that was an algorithm of uh, Mr. Petroda and then they started uh, passing on the benefits to him as well. So, but again the point is that digital, digital diaries came into being with this kind of a thought process. There is uh, a brilliant university called Transdisciplinary University in uh, uh, Karnataka and uh, they are working on associating traditional knowledge uh, for uh, modern usage in different walks of life and uh, they have for example, they have developed uh, a water purification system made of copper, copper has properties which can uh, purify water and uh, this uh, system has uh, water purification capacity as good as any other modern system and uh, the cost price which we were told if I am not wrong is uh, almost 600 rupees only. So, that is that is what they are working upon as far as this complete situation goes. There is whole lot of an industry which is working on uh, you know recycling things. Uh, very interesting lecture was going on uh, recently on uh, uh, nuclear reactors and nuclear power plants and uh, uh, it was told there that uh, you see there is another industry which has to come up later on when we uh, use nuclear reactors for producing power uh, that after a particular uh, stage when the, the these uh, reactors would get worn out. So, someone has to dispose uh, of these reactors completely or let us say in parts, but again that that has to utilize a different kind of a technology and that becomes a different kind of an entrepreneurial opportunity for so many people who are associated with this kind of high technology venture. So, uh, recycling technologies is for example, utilizing plastic uh, any sort of plastic uh, in their plant in UK for converting that thing into uh, oil and then recycling that oil for again converting that into several uh, uh, you know uh, plastic based material and, and so on. There is another thing uh, you see in, in due course of time so many things are parallelly, parallelly getting developed and it is very interesting to learn that uh, headphone based devices there is uh, for example, there, there was uh, a report uh, or, or uh, I saw it somewhere that uh, Y4 consulting for example, they say that uh, uh, you know uh, headphone based devices would uh, reduce the usage of mobile phones in several terms because you would be having a headphone and, and that headphone would be having a functional capacity of uh, uh, doing almost everything through internet connectivity you know taking calls and recognizing voices and doing so many things. For example, there is a device called uh, Pixel Buds by Google which is doing so many things on this and there are several other headphone based devices. So, that is going to reduce the utilization of uh, uh, mobile phone for several purposes. Uh, I do not know if it would be utilized only for visual purposes or someone else would rip, uh, some, uh, something else would replace this uh, as well. So, but again uh, the parallel technological development which definitely came in through some association with uh, uh, connections, contradictions, creative desperation, coincidences or, or something uh, that, that brought in uh, you know the utilization of these kind of things and so on. And, and uh, there are several other things you know apart from uh, plastic recycling or let us say nuclear reactors which I mentioned too. And if you uh, recently uh, there has been a research conducted on that how uh, waste material which is uh, which comes out of after demolition of several buildings can be utilized or recycled for again for utilization of uh, you know that uh, that material in uh, reconstruction or let us say uh, constructing uh, new buildings. And uh, people have scientists have found out that this can be done through uh, you know some uh, technology which they are uh, they are developing now. Uh, uh, the, the place where I am standing uh, IIT Roorkee uh, here every day you hear about stories that uh, you know uh, several scientific inventions or uh, you know applications are going on in several kinds of fields wherein uh, you know people are developing uh, devices or let us say applications from different kinds of things and then uh, those uh, when, when you ask uh, these brilliant people scientists and professors how do they do that they say that uh, you know that uh, somehow this insight came to them. Now, uh, this insight came to them means that there was an element of as I as I have been repeatedly saying during this discussion is that some connections, contradictions, curiosity 
coincidences and, and uh, you know uh, creative desperation and so on and then that insight came up with uh, you know uh, an idea to them and that idea was converted in laboratories or, or their field work into something and uh, that finally gets converted into products and, and uh, this is how the story goes. So, uh, there, there can be several, several other examples which can support this argument and but, but the objective here is to understand that uh, you know, if we uh, somehow methodically understand this correlation, then uh, our uh, thought process would be working in terms of uh, developing insights for ourselves and uh, uh, building up entrepreneurial capacity uh, in, in several kinds of fields. Uh, for example, uh, if you visit a toy store, that is very interesting. Uh, you know, uh, recently I was visiting a toy store with one of my friends uh, and uh, we were trying to purchase a uh, few things for uh, his children and uh, suddenly I realized that so much of creativity is associated in building up uh, toys for different age groups. So, one has to imagine what kind of a thought process a child has in a particular kind of age bracket and then what kind of interests can be there and then uh, they are utilizing several types of technologies to uh, develop beautiful toys and uh, creative toys. Um, and and uh, I found that uh, Indian entrepreneurs are working a lot in this field and, and uh, they are also manufacturing brilliant toys which can be utilized for different purposes by, by children. So, so uh, you know there are there are technology based toys, there are video based toys, there are uh, you know uh, this pen based uh, kind of creative toys and, and so many. So, once you visit these kind of stores you realize that lot of creativity goes in as far as developing a toy because every toy holds uh, a capacity of being developed as an individual brand later on. So, that is where entrepreneurial, pers uh, entrepreneurial perspective is associated with as far as inside development goes. Several other examples can be seen, uh, just keep looking for those. Thank you.